I think last year it was a good feeling because I knew we were a young team and we went far. But this year, all of us being seniors and it being our last year, I think we just really want to end with a bang. I think the goal this year is uh, definitely open division playoffs. Uh, and then once we get in, uh, just trying to make a run, trying to make a name for ourselves. He led California in tackles last year. I, I feel like he's, he's doing it again this year. He's, he's definitely on track. I knew I had to reach from last year. I knew I had like the brain to play linebacker. I just didn't combine that with the athleticism. I think this year I'm coming different because I just combined both those things and I'm just flying around. I just think we have to put trust in, put trust in everyone else on the field. Like me, I, I trust my linebackers. I trust, I trust my D-line. I trust my secondary. And when that happens, I feel like we're, we're a really hard team to beat. Man, in our secondary too, make it kind of easy to cover. Uh, we got Carter, John Chung, uh, Andrew Rocha. All those guys can go play college, like D1 sports. So uh, it makes it easy for me to play in that defense. That was just a really good play by Mitchell. We had one-on-one -on -one coverage press inside the inside the 20-yard line. Like we're gonna target that every time. So I, I mean, that was a great throw by Mitchell, and I'm glad that I could go make a play. We had a tough loss week one, but I think we kind of needed that to humble ourselves because we're a talented team. But it doesn't matter unless you put it together and you play as a team. Uh, and ever since then, we've just been trying to not even prove other people wrong, but just prove ourselves right. Because we know what we can do when we come together and practice hard. We, we feel better. I know that we're better. Everyone on our team knows that we're better. <laughs> going forward, I think you're going to see a lot of wins, a lot of physical football, and uh, a lot of big plays. Shout out Mitchell. Shout out Shane. That's it. That's all I got. Hello and welcome to Get Sports Focus. I hope you enjoyed that little piece that we just put out there. Um, Sacred Heart Prep is doing really good and uh, they have a big game against Los Gatos this coming Friday and I think I'm going to roll up and uh, see how that game goes before we go to the Sarah St. Francis game. But uh, this is week four now and I got a lot of uh, things coming at you. Obviously we have the uh, GSF Weekly Awards that's gonna come right after this. Um, I also have Bryce Luna from St. Francis stopping by. He's one of our GSF five-star athlete, and he, we're gonna talk about his most recent um, announcement on Twitter, on, on his social media. And also I got Coach Andrew De La Cruz joining me. We're gonna be doing some predictions for this Friday. <laughs> we're gonna see how it goes. We used to do this thing back in like 2015, 2016, and um, yeah, it worked out really well. And so we're bringing it back. We're gonna see how it goes. Uh, I feel like this year I am very connected with some of the teams and very well informed with some of the things that are going on in, in high school football in the Bay Area, but we're gonna keep it small. We got 10 games to predict and that's about it. And that's pretty much it. Make sure to follow us on social media, at Get Sports Focus, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and especially our YouTube page, and don't forget, GSF Senior All-Star Game, we are taking nominations and selecting players. Head on over to GetSportsFocus.com to nominate your senior athlete. We are looking for 100 players from the Bay Area, hopefully the South Bay and, and the Peninsula, um, to play in this game. And uh, if you're a mother, a father, a coach, an assistant coach, a parent or a teacher, a guardian and you have somebody who is all-star caliber and deserves that one extra game at the end of the season, make sure to fill out the nomination form at our website. All right, here we go. Get Sports Focus is brought to you by Summit Partners, leaders in growth equity investing, Ike's Love and Sandwiches, championship level sandwiches every single time. Weightsandbars.com. Build your home gym and shop locally from the Bay Area's best fitness equipment experts. And by South Bay Construction, a reputation built on trust. We'll start with the coach of the week, Keith Holden, head coach, Half Moon Bay. Half Moon Bay is off to a great start defeating Mountain View 37 to 30 to stay unbeaten at 4-0. Senior PJ Medina led the Cougars with three total touchdowns. Congratulations, coach. You definitely deserve the Ikes. Offensive player of the week, QB Mitchell Taylor 
Sacred Heart Prep. He completed eight out of 12 passes for 177 yards and two touchdowns. Nothing crazy, but pure quality. They have a very balanced offense, but when they need that big yardage play, Taylor can deliver. I mean, I'm getting time. My receivers are wide open. They're trying to play some man with no safety. I mean, that's what's going to happen. They just get... Defensive player of the week goes to the Royals junior linebacker, John Stowers. 6'2", 240. He is a massive dude. He averaged 18 tackles per game, and he got 17 against Silver Creek. He also got five TFLs. Congratulations, John Stowers, Overfelt Royals. Offensive lineman of the week, Carlman Scott Center, Gino DeMauro. Let me tell you why. Gino went up against one of the best, if not the best lineman in the CCS and handled himself well against Santa Clara's big defensive front. Congratulations, Gino. You are the GSF Offensive Lineman of the Week. Defensive Lineman of the Week, Westmont improved to 4-0 after beating Piedmont Hills 31-21. Defensive end, Tamba Mangura. Got the honors thanks to coach Mark Kanapu. He told us the junior was consistently making plays in the backfield, plugged his gap well, and was part of three sacks and four tackles for loss. Great job, TV. Special teams player of the week. This is a good one. Joseph Chavez Folsom. He made the most important play in the Bulldogs 23 to 15 win over Pittsburgh. His blocked field goal led to a 75 yard scoop and score by Aaron Smith in the fourth quarter. So who got the hustle play of the week? Aaron Smith. We got to give it to Smith. That play defines the award period hustle play of the week. 6'3", 180 pound athlete. Got the scoop and score heads up play. Great hustle play. 23-15 Folsom over Pitt. And shout out to Mitch Stevens for letting us use the video. Great job, fellas. You deserve to eat. Game changer, senior PJ Medina of Half Moon Bay. Yes, he led the attack with three total touchdowns in their 37 to 30 win over Mountain View High School. Check this out, 29 carries, 285 yards, three tugs. Shout out to our top dog, Owen Miller for the connection. He too had a pretty solid game on defense, eight tackles to be exact. They'll take on MA in two weeks on the 30th. Now, before I move on to the next segment, we have some merch available. Come get your stocking stuffers for Christmas early and pre-order some Get Sports Focus merchandise. We're trying to raise money to buy some new equipment. So yeah, what a better way to do it than to sell some items so that we can keep doing what we love doing. Thank you in advance for your order. Moving on. Waiting for Bryce Luna to join me. Um, it is week four, and so far we have four MVPs, four GSF MVPs. Week one, we have Jurion Dickey from Menlo Atherton. Week two, we have Molidi Saleh from Wilcox. Week three, Jesse Herrera, Pioneer. And this weekend, week four, Mitchell Taylor sacred heart prep that's a good looking group right there but i just want to give a shout out to those four guys because they really did their thing um to start off the season oh there we go bryce luna is just about ready to join me right here um bryce is a very talented athlete he is a football player and he is a wrestler. So this Friday is gonna be a big weekend. We have the Sarah Padres going to St. Francis. It's gonna be another entertaining game. It is our GSF game of the week. 
And uh, in preparation for this weekend, I was just scrolling through Twitter and a and I found a tweet by one of our GSF five-star players, Bryce. He tweeted something that has to do with next level stuff. And he is now joining me via Zoom. Bryce! <laughs> Can you see me? Oh, what's up, Al? What's going on? Good, good. We're all, we're all good down here. Man. So I was just talking about the upcoming game with the Sarah Padres and the St. Francis Lancers. It's going to be another big matchup. It's going to go down to the wire. We did some predictions. I'm not going to tell you what I predicted because you, now you got to watch. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> but that that's that's St. Francis stuff. I want to talk about you. Yeah. Uh, in preparation for this, I actually was going through Twitter and trying to figure out what happened this past weekend. And, and I saw a tweet from your, your account. Uh, why don't we start with that? What is new, Mr. Bryce Luna? Uh yeah, the, uh this past weekend the uh I took a my first official recruiting trip to uh, Army West Point in New York and uh it was a success. I'll, I'll tell you that it is it was fun. Guys were all welcoming welcoming. Uh the coaches uh they loved having me there and the other recruits. There was about nine other of us and uh wow. Uh four of them were already co uh committed as along alongside me. So it was it was a dream come true, kind of. Yeah, I saw the tweet. I saw the picture. You look great, man. I was like, "Whoa, he looks official." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they they're they are one team, and they are a brotherhood. They they bring everyone together. Uh, they have team meetings after practices too. Uh, Saturday practices are hard too. Uh, they go about thirty minutes of physical drilling, and then uh, our live practice. So. They're they're wow. just like down here, so I see, I see. Well, I'm proud of you, man. For those of you watching this and you have no idea who this young man is, this is the CCS 120 pound champion, and he finished fourth in state last year. That's big time. And uh he's he just said he's going to Army West Point for a wrestling scholarship, correct? Yeah, yeah. Are you gonna be playing football too? I mean, uh, <laughs> that that is an option there. Yeah, I was just uh at the football game too on Saturday. I was uh I was on the field talking with coaches still, so nice. it is an option. I'm staying in contact with uh both the wrestling and football coaches. So nice, nice. Well, I mean, I let's see. I I don't even know where where should we really start. Uh, why don't we do wrestling? Since I met I met your dad through wrestling, so why don't we yeah. start with that? At one point, there were three Lunas at St. Francis, correct? Yes, that this past year, uh, Matthew, the the freshman, me as a sophomore, and Ryan as a senior. So it was a pretty exciting year. So that's awesome, man! Having your brothers there with you. I mean, your actual brothers. Yeah, yeah. In the same school, in the same sport, uh, football, and wait, your oldest brother he didn't play football, right? Ryan not play football, which honestly my dad kind of regrets not having him do to uh, create a more uh, friendship around. But he he's still in contact with those football players that he uh, met during the school years uh, through his four years. So I, I, I think it was a good fit for him anyways. Nice. Well, I'm glad that he had a senior year. Unlike yeah. the other yeah, guy. Last... I know. I remember Karsten. 2020 i mean this was right before covid he had that yeah, crazy sophomore. match or against junior, Logados. Yeah. I mean, he dislocated his arm if you look at the video they, they when, <laughs> popped it back in yeah, yeah popped it back then kept going uh i was actually looking forward to his senior year but it didn't happen because of covid so that was a bummer um, yeah. but i'm glad your your brother had a senior year and yeah, he's doing well now, right? He's in college. Yeah, yeah. he's at uh, Presbyterian in South Carolina, so he's doing real well down there. Nice. So they're not going to redshirt him either because they they want him wrestling. Nice, nice. So tell me about wrestling and how you guys got started wrestling as a uh, family. It, it, it is a family uh, 
it, it's a family thing. Uh, my dad started when he was in middle school, so transferred over to high school. He he was pretty good in in high school, but uh, he he didn't go to college for it. So and now he worked us into it when we were uh, three to four years old. He actually bribed us with ice cream to go to practices and stuff. So he <laughs> said, you don't, you don't go to practice, you don't get ice cream. So I think that was the trick to uh, getting us to wrestle. And honestly, it it, it worked because uh, <laughs> me and my uh, Ryan are going to college soon. So, well, he's wow. already in college. So. And Matthew is probably going to go too. Yeah, Matt, Matthew, we're, we're working on him, yeah. So nice. He was just a freshman, so I mean, he he did well for for a freshman uh, his first year in high school. So and he didn't cut any weight. So oh, he didn't. No, he he Ryan was actually the one that cut it uh cut the weight. So Matthew just stayed at his regular weight. I mean, he beat the twelve seed. So wow. So yeah. is he just gonna keep going? Matt, um, yeah, Matthew will probably keep growing, but I think this year we'll definitely cut him down a little bit so we can get up into them placement rounds. Wow. Man, I would love to visit your house and see what's in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's not much, I'll tell you that. Yeah, we, we, we're we a little complainers around when it comes to food. Wow. We're, yeah. Man, but no, that's exciting, man. I mean, it, it was, I remember when your oldest brother was a freshman, and, you know, I mean, everybody talks about the yeah. freshman coming in. It's like, oh, this guy's good. And I was yeah. like, and it was it was cool to follow him all the way through. And now we have you uh, talk about talk about your experience last year um, going to, you know, blown through CCS and then going to state. Uh, yeah, it was it was in a exciting year. I mean, I had a rough start in the beginning at Doc B. I was that was like right after football season. So we were kind of just seeing where I would fit in in the uh, weight classes. So I went 126, uh, first tournament of the year, big one, top in the in the nation. So I had yeah. to work my way around that. Uh, then I found out where I where I would fit in and took it from there. Uh, went to Temecula, did real well over there. So we found our spot there. And uh, uh, the team, we, we, we were doing good all around. Uh, W cows, we're we're not really, we're we're beyond that. We we want CCS. CCS is where we want to go, and then hopefully take more people to state this year. I I feel like we have that uh, spiritual uh in us, and that can lead us all the way. I I'm just trying to be a leader, just like Ryan was, that created this uh dynasty for St. Francis back up since uh 2010, maybe. Uh. It, it was a great experience, though. A lot of more people coming out this year, so it, it's going to be fun this year. From what I remember, so my son, my oldest son, AJ, I got his poster up there. <laughs> um, he wrestled, and we went to a tournament, and I think he was still in JV when we went to this one particular tournament. And St. Francis had two teams, JV teams. And you guys had, like, 20 people. Yeah, yeah, almost like one for each for each weight class, plus a few more. You know, like two yeah, we, for weight classes. Yeah, What's going are, on there? Like, how how are all these people getting in the wrestling? This is, it's exciting. It's cool. Yeah. These are boys and girls that I saw. Yeah, it. Uh, Ryan was the he started it. I mean, Coach Cobb, Coach Muman. They Coach Muman does a lot of recruiting from the football players too. Nice. So That's he smart. takes freshmen and uh, advertises our wrestling team. Uh, throughout the football season and uh, actually a lot of them came did come through with it so I mean we had Cat Caddy who was a freshman last year he won W Cal's last year so uh, he's definitely coming back out uh, the girls team we're, we're we are definitely working on that but they can be uh, they can be pretty solid nice no that's that's exciting so how many guys on the football team are on the wrestling team uh, gotta right be a now, good number uh, right now for varsity, it is a, uh, it's me, DJ, uh, Max and uh, Ryan Overwise Mannion, and uh, I think we're, I'm trying to get my friend uh Chris Christopher Quinones out there, so we'll we'll try and work on his footwork in there in the wrestling room too. So 
Yeah. I mean, it's it's helped DJ a lot. He, coming from freshman to senior year now, he's he's gotten better. I think wrestling and football, especially if you're like a linebacker or maybe even a lineman, to go through that experience of like one-on-one -on -one battle, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it yeah. benefits them the most. And, and I always try to encourage those guys, like, do you wrestle? <laughs> that would be my first yeah, yeah. Be my first question if I see a big dude. It's like, oh, you play football. Do you wrestle? You should, especially yeah. if they go to, like, a good school, a, a good wrestling school. Like, they should really be part of that. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. glad your your school is, like, it's taken off when it comes to that. Because that's, that's awesome, man. I mean, I know MA's got a good women's program. Mm -hmm. and, and if you guys build that up, I mean, you can you – can, challenge them and yeah you know that that that's awesome <laughs> so when when football ends you go you go straight to wrestling we you go straight do, to like wrestling. you don't do wrestling while you're still in football uh no no we don't like some like at the end of the year when we get close to the end of the year like uh some of us in the wrestling room will will come in early in the mornings before school like uh, at six o'clock, wrestle for an hour and then, uh, go to school. And then after, uh, we'll have football and then we'll just repeat that cycle until football's over. I see, man. So where do you find time for yourself for homework for social life? I mean, I don't uh, expect to be a wrestler uh, and it, uh, take, it takes a lot of, yeah. you know, I mean, that's, it that's, takes a lot of energy. Yeah. And like coming home late too after mm -hmm. wrestling practice, Thank goodness there's not much traffic on the way home from <laughs> Mountain View to Gilroy. So, uh, but yeah, we we do stay up kind of late most nights getting our homework done. But uh, since there's days in between to get homework in, so we can go to bed early and then get up early again. Yeah, it's rough. Do you drive now? Yeah, I, I've been driving since freshman year. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah. so I mean, I remember when you joined our seven on seven team. Uh, you were with us for a little bit, and then you disappeared because of wrestling season. Yeah, was, yeah, the three weeks came back, yeah. and and I'm just like thinking, I was like, man, why does he find time to do all this? <laughs> yeah, weekends weekends is definitely the uh, my, where I get my free time most of the time. So like. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll probably normally try and get homework done on the Sundays when we didn't have anything and work everything in on a, on a Saturday. So I do have time to get my work in sometimes. Nice. So as far as uh, so wrestling, I know high school wrestling is, is one thing. And then there's the uh, off-season wrestling. Do you do a lot of off-season wrestling too? I, I do do a lot of off-season wrestling. So in this like, uh, during 2020, during COVID, me and my family kind of built a little, uh, we tore down our barn and created our own little gym complex nice. out of it. So a lot of wrestlers uh, will come down to Gilroy and uh, wrestle from the team, get better. We have our coach, Jake Tannenbaum. He'll drive down and uh, coach us, wrestle with us in about an hour and a half. I mean, we get a lot, a lot of work done in there. Now, you mentioned Gilroy. Isn't there a good wrestling team in Gilroy? Yeah, Gilroy High School. <laughs> Gilroy High School. Yep, yep. Yeah. Are you are they're... you connected with that community at all? Are you guys connected or? Uh, we're yeah, we're a little connected. I mean, I'm good friends with uh Daniel Cormier still, so we nice. we we, te we text back and forth a couple of times. He congratulated me on my commitment to Army. So, and then Kyle Crutchmer, who doesn't coach there anymore, but you know he he stays connected. Um, they're a good community, though. I mean, we still got friends over there. Yeah, I I, I want to visit that facility that they just uh, opened up. Yeah, I think like last year or two years ago now. Yeah, yeah. Flies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, my little brother Hunter, he he still he still trains down there with uh DC's little middle school academy. So wait, there's another brother. Yeah, so the Hunter's the last. Hunter Luna is the last one. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know that. That's awesome, man. So wow, that's crazy. That's cool. Well, something yeah. to look forward to. There's yeah. definitely like a, a dynasty. Oh, now let's switch to football a little bit. 
Um, you guys got a big game this Saturday. I mean, Friday, Friday. Sorry. Yeah. It's Friday night. Friday. At St. Francis. At St. Francis. Um, how is football going for you? And I know like there was a switch as far as your position. I was I was a little surprised, but I was like, yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, coaches have uh been switching me around, seeing where we could uh find holes in the offense. I mean, they they love playing me all around. They had me uh running back, then they switched me. Uh I was at strong safety on defense. Then they during the summer workouts actually, they were like, you know, it'd be a uh a pretty good fit is at the at the D line with your quick uh quick feet hand yeah. movements from wrestling, and so I mean it it did translate. I mean they taught me a lot. I learned the new position, so when I'm at strong safety, I know their position, know my position. Um, it also I could also help my teammates with it too, just to uh, confirm things, make sure all alignments are good. Yeah, no, that's awesome, man. I I, I was happy to see that when. I think it's a smart thing. And, um, you know, I think this game is going to be big, going to be going to be one of those. Games. This is a championship game, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, First we w one. I mean, both teams are really excited. I know I know we are and I know uh, Sarah is. So it'll, it'll be a fun one to watch. Definitely. Um, now, as far as, you know, your goals, I know you're you're you, you verbally committed already to the next level. Uh, but how did you get here, man? Like, what's been driving you? What's been the driving force? Who are the people, most important, influential people in your life that, that got you to where you are right now? Um, I think it was uh, definitely the transition from uh, working, uh, practicing at Gilroy to moving to AKA, where Daniel Cormier uh, originally had his uh, facilities. So, And then he brought in Kyle Crutchmer from Oklahoma State. And then Nick Pinchonini from there, Jacoby Smith, uh, Kyle Driscoll from Oklahoma. I mean, they they definitely helped me reach my limits of uh, potential during my wrestling career. And then I just took off when uh, Ryan made the dynasty at St. Francis. And then, honestly, for me, it's, it's kind of my mindset that uh, drives me to uh, be who I am on and off the mat. Uh, I, I, I try to not worry about the fans or whatever in the stands. I try to just do me and uh, make sure my opponents just know who I am on there. Well, I'll tell you what, though. I I did see you during the football season last year, and I met you actually at, during our 7-on-7 seven -seven stuff, and I knew you were a wrestler. But at that point, up to that point, I never saw you wrestle. Like in person, yeah. Still, CCS. Yes. I remember seeing you, and I'm like, "Whoa! I have never seen yeah. like that." Yeah, I. I, I mean, you know. were, you were, you were intense, dude. And uh, I mean, I, I, I forgot the match. I, I'm like six to three or something like that. You, you dominated the match, but it's, it's just, uh, it was cool to see a different side of you. Um that that was yeah. just like totally different i was like whoa and i remember going back to the team i was like hey don't worry about bryce man he's got some some <laughs> cool things going on <laughs> yeah i definitely have a different style and mindset compared to my uh my brothers and my teammates i mean i i just go out there and, uh do my thing uh i just want to try and put on a show for the people too i mean People definitely say I'm one of the meanest out there on the mat. Yeah. <laughs> and I, that, that's one of my motives to trying to go and put pain on people. I mean, nice. I want I want to try and make them quit out there. Nice. No, I, I love I love it, man. Entertain us some more. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the to the rest of the football season. Obviously, football season is going to end and it's going to be wrestling season. We're going to have our sevens, but I'm going to try to make it out to some of your tournaments uh during the year now for your tournaments for wrestling are they all like the regular tournaments like in the california are, are you like national where you're gonna go out of state and and do all uh that? like for the first couple tournaments we'll be in state uh we'll we'll be at doc doc b in uh clovis and all that it's gonna be at clovis high school so we'll yeah. be there and then 
will travel down south to Temecula Battle, uh, Temecula Valley for Battle for the Belt, and uh, we'll we'll pretty much be all, all over California. Nice. But I don't know if we'll. I mean, we'll probably be in Nevada too. This uh, the first week when the we wrestle TLC, in December. Tournament Champions. Yeah, that's always a good one. I've been there twice. It was just too far, but you know, I mean, there's some there's some really good wrestling out there. I I think CCS is going to be solid this year. Yeah. Um, you know, between some of the WCAL guys and the, and the Gilroy guys, I think, I think it's going to be solid. So man, well, I, I mean, thanks for doing this, man. I saw the tweet. I was like, I got to hit you up and I'm glad that you were able to make some time. I know it's a big week for, for, for the Lancers and, um, Anything you want to say, anybody you want to say thank you to before we wrap this up? Uh, I just want to say thank you to uh, my parents for getting me here. I mean, they really put a lot of time and money in getting me to tournaments, practices, and seeing that my hard work has paid off has really given them and not paying, having to pay for the college either. So that really helped them out a lot. So, I mean, they they do a lot for me, and then my brothers for being there for me all all throughout my years of wrestling, and uh, I mean yeah, I mean I've always been the the quiet guy in the group, so I'm I'm off normally to my uh by my side, uh to myself. So I mean them still being there with me is is something that I'll cherish forever and take it to college too. That's awesome, man. I normally would end it right there but so there's a question just a, just popped in my head i met your dad i mean i i've talked to your dad a few times your dad is super cool um you know he's involved he he, he coaches right he's a coach yeah yeah he, he also, yeah, he also he, helps out with the school um and and i remember uh during during our sevens like he was always around and you know very very supportive um and i see how 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 involved they are. I mean, I didn't know there was a younger brother. A no, younger yeah, there's middle a middle schooler. Yeah, That's insane, man. Yeah. Where did they have time to, you know? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's crazy. But my question is this. What would you tell other kids' parents? Uh... As far as, you know, how to... What would be your advice to parents of young athletes? Uh, I would say uh, you got you you gotta know uh what your child child's interest in. I mean, our parents kind of led us to this interest. I mean, let them find their path of who they want to be and what they want to do as they grow older. Because some people, some of the kids may not do like the sport that you liked. I mean. My parents got lucky that uh, we liked the wrestling part for my my dad's family. So, uh, I mean, you could also bribe them with ice cream too. So that's an, that's another way. That's another way. That's a main thing. You bribe them with sweets, you're you're gonna get them to uh, like the sport. So that's classic, dude. That's classic. I love that. Well, Bryce, you know, I'm glad you are on our team. It doesn't matter. If you're on our team next year or not, you'll always be a GSF five star, and uh, I'm gonna hook you up with it. I, I gotta give you a present, man. I got I gotta get, I gotta get our guy to create a a custom GSF five star wrestling sing singlet just for you. You can use it. You don't have to I'll, use I'll, it. I'll be sure to wear it. <laughs> I'll be sure to wear it one time. Dang, man. I, I mean. Dude, this is awesome. I mean, thank thank you for uh, making the time. And, you know, I'll see you Friday. Um, and that's pretty much it, man. I'm, I'm glad we got to talk. So, yeah, I, I appreciate it. Uh, the guys back home at uh, West Pine were pretty excited for me when I told them I had an interview. So they're nice. pretty, pretty excited, too. So uh, they 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 can't wait till I get out there in two years. So, man, and it's going to it's going to go like that, man. Yeah. Before you know it, we're gonna do one of these. It'll be after you won a state championship in the back room. Yeah, yeah. Ho field. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely uh chasing that goal next year. I mean, I I got so close last year losing in the semis, but 
I mean, I could definitely win it the next two years, probably back to back, hopefully. Hey, man, I believe in you. We're all pulling for you. And uh, we're, we're, we're going to be we're going to be watching in the next couple of years, man. It's going to be awesome. So. All right. I'll let you go. Go do some homework. Yeah, I, I got a lot of <laughs> catching up to do. All right. Take care. All right. All right. Waiting for Coach Andrew. Waiting for Coach Andrew to join me here on on this thing. <laughs> what up? <laughs> I got a camera over there. I got a computer right here. And I got you right there. Get Sports Focus is brought to you by Summit Partners, leaders in growth equity investing, Ike's Love and Sandwiches, championship level sandwiches every single time, weightsandbars.com, build your home gym and shop locally from the Bay Area's best fitness equipment experts, and by South Bay Construction, a reputation built on trust. All right, so we got the prediction segment, bringing it back from 2015. Last time we did this, people hated us and people loved us. Unfortunately, that's how it's going to be again this year. But I call this segment the make us proud or prove us wrong segment, because that's really what it is. Just a disclaimer. We don't hate you if we don't pick you. And if we do pick you, that doesn't mean we like you. <laughs> that makes sense. Well, <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. So oh, make yeah. us proud or prove us wrong. First game on the list, coach. St. Ignatius driving down 280 to Bellarmine at San Jose City College. You want to go first or you want, should I go first? You can go first. It's uh, let's you kick it off. You want me to go first? All right. Here's the thing: one and two versus one and two. They both had similar preseason opponents, but I gotta give the edge to the Bellarmine Bells because it's their first home game. You know the yell leaders are gonna be out. All the parents are gonna be there with their with their cousins and uncles, and it's just gonna be packed on the Bellarmine side, and. Uh, they're going to be pumped. So I say 24-21, Parker three with three touchdowns. That's my prediction. Okay. I like that. Um, I do agree with the, I mean, the San Jose City, you know, that, that atmosphere that they bring there, it's a hometown game. I mean, it's a home game. Yeah. And it's the league opener for them. So you know this one's going to get crazy. That student section from Bellarmine is crazy. So... the The... The baby. Oh yeah, I think they're gonna they're gonna pull ahead, and I think you know what I see from you know I'm a Dub Cal kid, you know, I see SI coming in late. Like I think Bell's gonna be way ahead, but they're gonna get that late surge of SI, and I think SI will probably still come short, you know. But I'm still calling Bellman. I say 35-21. Nice. All right. All right. Up next, Los Gatos at Sacred Heart Prep. Afternoon game, 4 p.m. We're going to try to make that one. I'm, actually, I'm going to be there for the, at least the first half, and I'm going to leave the intern, Manalo, with Theo to shoot the rest of the game while I go to the Sarah St. Francis game. But 2-1 and one versus 3-1, and one, Los Gatos had a bye last week, SHP. You guys just saw the game of the week this Saturday, and uh, they, they made a statement with a big win over Reardon. I'll take SHP for that one. Uh, it's it's at home. They have the big momentum, and um, but it's going to be a high scoring game. I'd say about 35-28. Gators. Gators. Ah. You know I, you know watching Los Gatos, like you know, and like how consistent they've been, you know, just over the years, um, and coming off of a bye. And being able to watch that big statement game against Reardon, you know, I even with momentum, like I say, luck favors the prepared. I'm going, I'm going Los Gatos actually. Okay. Los Gatos 28 14. I don't think it's going to be high. I think Los Gatos is going to pull it away though. 28 14. Okay. Okay. I got you. Jalen Thomas, I still love you, man. I hope you score three touchdowns at this at that game. Um, but yeah, I'm sticking with, with my pick. Number three, Reardon at Valley Christian. 
We just saw Reardon. They are two and one. Valley Christian is one and two. Valley Christian is just not the same without Jurion Dickey. And uh, they did have a bye, like everybody else in the WCAL. And they're riding over, they're riding high right now with their big win over San Benito. I hate to say it, but Reardon, I think this is going to be a Reardon game. Um, they're really mad about the beat down from SHP, and they're just going to come back strong. I'm expecting a 35-14 game uh, from Coach Adir squad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, over Valley. Yeah, I'm I'm going to pull the same thing. Um, I know Valley's moving around some people, which, like, it showed against San Benito, which was really interesting to, like, see, like, different players that you don't, you didn't really get to hear about, like, the first couple weeks getting in. Um, but that young talent on Reardon, yeah. Wow. That's wow. I, yeah, 35 14, rooted. I'm you with you on that one. Ball over, though. Fellas, you cannot turn the ball over. Yeah, that, that can't. They will capitalize on that. All right. Up next, game number four the Archbishop Midi Monarchs, the undefeated Midi Monarchs, taking on Sacred Heart Cathedral at Kizar Stadium. 3 0 versus 2 and 1. Sacred Heart Cathedral, they got the home field advantage. It's going to be in San Francisco. It's going to be grass. And you already know Jerry Mixon, Oregon commit, four-star running back, linebacker. He's going to go off in this game. This is going to be the game that we're all going to remember this season. And uh, what are you laughing at? <laughs> we can't be there. But I know SH, they have a really good streaming service. I don't know what they use, but they're really good at streaming their games. And uh, we'll be watching for sure. So I'd say 21 to 17 Irish. Really? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> I mean, Midi had that big statement game week one against Palma. That was a big, that was a big statement. And then to really put it on to you know, Mount View and then Santa Teresa, like really put that on with them. And why not go up against a defending, you know, CCS champion yeah, yeah. to open up your league? Because I'm, I'm, I'm biased. I'm a MIDI alum. <laughs> I'm a MIDI you alumni. Against, you can't, you can't pick against your school. I can't pick, I can't pick against our school, but I think this is the game that's going to reestablish that MIDI is back as a WCAL power. So Monarchs all the way make us proud. 28-7. I think they're gonna blow this out. Ooh. I believe in that. I believe in that defense. That defense okay. is good. And the way that that offense is starting to click, you got Scadero, Ben Kim, run hard, and that and AJ Senazal, man. That kid, watch him. Watch I him. Think, and, and Justice is locked down. Yeah, I was about to say that. Just I'm sorry, right Coach down. Sullivan. You know you're my guy, but I'm going to stick with my pick. I, I do think this is going to be a really, really good game. It's going to be a good game. Because of, out of all these games, this is one of the games that we picked that, I mean, it's pretty even. So it's it's going to go down to it. And, um, yeah, I don't know. might even go to overtime. We'll see. Yeah, 28-7. Let's go, Mitty. Yeah. Bring it back. Bring it back. Next up. Fifth game on the list, we got the Menlo Atherton Bears. The Bad News Bears versus the Wilcox Chargers. Unfortunately, they lost last week over up in Loomis uh, against Del Oro. But this is tough. Jurion Dickey, he is the magic man. And uh, he scored five touchdowns against Wilcox last year when he was at Valley. So I say he'll do it again. He'll do it again. He's going to do it again. He's going to be the guy. Uh, I love my dudes at Wilcox. Armand, you know, man, I got players at Wilcox on our 7-on-7 seven seven team. But I do believe MA will shut down the run and force the Chargers to pass more. And, you know, unfortunately, this is going to be a thriller kind of a game. And uh, I am predicting a 28-24 to 24 Menlo Atherton Bears win <laughs> i like that i you know what 
I'd say like in terms of if like on paper and then like, you know, what we've seen from like, you know, the video, I'd say like these two teams are, this is a great balanced matchup. Like they have guys that can cover anybody on each side of the ball. Yeah. Like it's a very balanced matchup. So I think it's honestly, I think whoever gets the ball last is winning this game. Oh, that's, okay. that's, that's where I think it's going to go. And honestly, and you just got to give it to like whoever gets that, give that to the playmakers. So, you know, if, if MA gets it, you know what they're going to do. And honestly, if Wilcox did it, they have some playmakers there. I think it's going to be closer. I'm calling like a 24 21, but I will go with the Bears. The Bears. The Bears. Well, I, I got 28 24, so we're, we're kind of in the same. Kind of in the same way. Yeah. I think, like I said, I think it's going to be whoever gets the ball last in that game wins it. It's going to, it's going to be a turnover thing, too. Mm -hmm. Like, I've seen both teams, I, I've seen these guys. They're very, very physical. So if you're the on the offense, you got to hold on to that ball because, yeah, it's going to be physical for sure. All right, number six, speaking of physical, these two teams, I, I saw these guys and you saw the, the video mm -hmm. too. Uh, Folsom at De La Salle, three and one versus three and one. I'm all in on the Spartans, man. I don't think the Spartans are going to lose any games the rest of the way. Uh, they're going to go beat this team 42 to 21. Um, they got the juice flowing. So, and it's a home game. You know, they, they were on the road, big win on the road, and they're just going to keep that fire going. So, I'm picking De La Salle over Folsom. Uh, 42 yeah. to 21. Oh, yeah. No, De, De La Salle at home. You know, I remember playing there. Um, that's a hard place to beat, <laughs> like to beat them or just to even play. Like, yeah. it's it's tough. And honestly, ever since that Sarah game, I don't think they want They're not going to lose to anybody else out here in Northern California. They're going to make sure that that does not happen. Um, they're, and all their players are like, they're starting to come up. Like they're starting to be like, all right, they're taking it into their hands. So I'm, yeah, De La Salle. I'm actually going 35-14. So okay. kind of kind of similar. I don't think it's going to go that high because I will. I still got to give some respect to Folsom's defense on that. They're still pretty. They're still pretty sound. So I think they'll get that. They'll probably get like I think those scores from Folsom will probably be one early and then one's going to come in like really late. So I'm going to stick with that. Okay, sounds good. All right, number seven. Your boys at Christopher is going to be on the road at Lee. Or is it, are they going <laughs> to? I love it, man. Them Cougars will win this one. Lee, they just do not look good so far. Uh, I think it's going to be a running clock third quarter. 42 to 12, Rizcala's team. That's what I'm picking. Oh, Christopher, yeah. Or Christopher, obviously. Yeah. Um, I mean, Christopher's blowing out these opponents, like, as they should be blowing them out. Um, you know, Lee is just another, like, you know, just another person on the list of them. Like, But, you know, it's good for them to do this because they're transitioning to this brand new league. They're coming off of, like, they're coming out of the Gabalin League. So, you know, this is, like, a good way for them to establish dominance, like, in this league. Like, they can really do that. I'm actually going... 56-3. They'll let them get a field goal. Wow. I'm hey, they they've been putting that up. I think they're gonna do oh, I know. Three. Wow. Do you yeah. think they're gonna have time to actually score that much? Oh, the defense is gonna put up. <laughs> defense defense is gonna score. <laughs> defense is gonna put up half of those points too. Yeah, I gotcha. I gotcha. All right. We we have to change this one. Initially we had Oak Grove at Prospect, but we have to change it because for some reason there's those two teams might not play this Friday, but we got number eight Monterey two and two versus Montevista Christian two and two. I gotta be honest, I don't know these teams very well, uh, mm -hmm. I, but all I know is that Montevista Christian's field is by far one of the best. It's right up there with Kizar. It's right up there with you know the best uh high school football fields in in norcal um but i think just looking at the record i think they're gonna score eight touchdowns against this team 
who's struggling offensively. Uh, 56 to 12. Mustangs is what I'm picking. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, NBC just beat up on Santa Cruz and Santa Cruz that, like, you know, they played what they had, what, nine and one last year, or they had a high, good record last year. Um, Monterey did lose, like, like real, they lost in the last second. I don't know if you saw that. Like, they lost in the last second to San Benito, and that was a super heads up play from San Benito. So, big ups to San Benito to win that game. So, I do expect Monterey to come back very physical. I know, like, I know these schools because this is down in my area. Yeah, um, yeah. Mo Monta Vista is getting better. They're like, they're getting better as the season goes on. I think this is going to be a high scoring game. So, I'm calling NBC. 42-35. 42-35. I like it. Okay. Now, on Thursday, there's going to be a Thursday matchup between Leland, Pat Tillman's alma mater, at Westmont. Westmont Warriors. Uh, it, this is Westmont for sure. I think they can shut them down. Uh, I want to see Mason Price score you know, three or four touchdowns against Leland. And um, this is one and three versus four and oh. I've seen Westmont. They have a very, very good squad. There's a lot of speed in that team. Um, yeah, I think they're going to put up seven to eight touchdowns against Leland. Okay. I mean, yeah, Westmont is a, it's tough to play. Like, I mean, a lot of people would know that stadium. It's a really, really nice place to play. It's very open. Um, but I think, Leland's going to turn it around coming into the league. That quarterback from Leland, you know, he can be very, very deadly. You know, I think he's he's starting to turn it around. I call last second score going to be tied up at the area end, and I think Leland's going to win it 28 to 21 right at the end. Wow. So you're basically saying there's going to be some really big endings this, this coming weekend. I... <laughs> I think so. I think so. Nice. All right. And finally, the GSF game of the week. We've all been waiting for this rematch. Sarah Padres, the number one Sarah Padres, taking on the number, I think they're number seven. Well, St. Francis. This is like WCAL one and two or two and one. Or they're both, Sarah's four and oh. St. Francis is one and two, but mm -hmm. they are battle tested. Battle tested. Tested. Um, and I think this is going to be for the WCL title. Uh, Sarah's just too far ahead as far as the WCL, but in this game, that doesn't really matter. Uh, one thing about Sarah in the past few seasons, and especially the season so far, they're playing championship football, and uh, they do bring out the best out of their opponents and the WCAL is a tough league. So you have a lot of smart coaches, talented players. Some people might predict a landslide win for Sarah, but I think this will be a close game. I really do think this is going to be a close game. I think the Lancers, they're going to surprise some people. I will pick Sarah 42, 35 uh, with fireworks from QB Milwaukee Smith and Matthew Doherty. Because Sarah's offense, I mean, Sarah's defense, as good as they are, they can be scored on. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, That's yeah. Prediction. Oh, yeah. I mean, this, I mean, everyone looks at this matchup like the last few years, like this has been the matchup that kind of determines like the number one and number two spot in the open division. Like, yep. essentially, this is what happens and it's whoever, this is who wins the WCAL title. I mean, you already talked about it, you know, two very well coached programs and with all like they have like the right players in the right positions. Like these are really good battle test teams. They had a really good preseason before going into this. It's going to be a trench war. I think the game's going to be one at the line, like as it Always. should be. <laughs> Always. Always. It's, and <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be a shootout between Smith and Doherty. Like it's going to be a shootout and I think this one's going to be the deciding factor is who makes less mistakes. Yeah. You know, we've been, and that's the thing, you know, we've seen mistakes from both the Lancers and both the Padres. 
we've seen some mistakes that have been happening. So whoever makes less of those is going to win it. So I think I'm going to go Padres. Still going to go with Padres on this one. 42-28. 42-28. I didn't really list the, the picks. So I, I don't know how many games we agree on as far as the win column and and, and lost column, but... Um, I think the only one we didn't agree on was Leland and... The Midi one? Oh, no. Yeah, Leland, Midi, and Sacred Heart Prep. Oh, okay. Yeah. There we go. All right. Well, either make us proud or prove us wrong. Don't hate. <laughs> Ball out. <laughs> um, yeah, this is, this is cool. We'll see what happens. I mean... You know, I like all these teams. I'm a big fan of high school sports, and you know there are kids from from the teams that I picked against that that I know really well. And you know, I hope that they will prove me wrong. Oh yeah, I mean, these preseasons going because most of these guys are going into league. So you know, these preseasons that these guys have taken, you know, some of them yeah. took a lot of uh, you know some schools took a lot of confidence games. So their confidence is running high. Um, and a lot of other teams took like, they wanted to take the battle route because they know that their battle ahead is gonna be just even tougher. Yeah. So you have two different paths, you know, right now as league starting, we're gonna see, you know, which one's gonna be the most successful, you know, down the line. And it, again, you know, a lot of people had a buy this week. So it's a, it's a long season ahead for some of yeah. these some of these teams since they just got they're getting they're coming off that bye week yeah so we'll see what happens no yeah 100 percent uh, uh what do you think of uh your midi monarchs for the for the season like how do you think they're gonna do oh we're back they're back i'm i'm very it looked very like confident. it yeah, i'm i'm pretty confident you know i think they've been counted out so much um there's been a lot of change and i think this staff like has everything in place they really took it around they turned this thing around so if they not if when yeah i'm putting it on you coach sullivan <laughs> when when they beat sacred heart that'll ring and rattle the dub cow i think so too it's going to i think so too so for me, I just want to see Oak Grove play, man. I, I want to see them play another game and hopefully get a W. Because yeah. uh, they got Coach Cordero, and he, they, they got to get it back. They won last game. They did. They did. Like and then they had a bye, and now there's a – I think the game is going to be forfeited against Prospect. That's what oh, I man. heard. You know, whenever you see this, I, I don't know what's going on with that game yet, but we'll find out Friday. Um, yeah. Oak Grove needs, uh, like, you can tell, like, Oak Grove, like, you know, it. they started a little, you know, brand new staff, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of new young kids coming up to varsity. So oh, everyone's, yeah. yeah, everyone's just starting to mesh. Like, that last game, like, really showed, like, okay, this is going to be something. They're just going to keep it. getting yeah, better. Yeah, exactly just gonna keep getting better they need another game to like learn how to trust each other yeah no most definitely so but yeah man i mean that's that's pretty much it Let, let's let's see how this works out and then uh if if it all goes well <laughs> we'll do it again next week <laughs>